Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to Ruby Tutorials for Beginners. In the last video, I showed you how to download and install Ruby. Now in this video, we're going to go ahead and uh, get our hands dirty. We're going to be writing code. Uh, but before you do that, I just want to give you a very simple, um, brief history lesson about Ruby. So basically, the creator of Ruby is uh, Yukuhiro Masumoto. He created Ruby in 1993 and his goal was to make Ruby a natural a language basically make it as close to English as possible even Ruby is often described as a dynamic and open source programming language with a focus on simplicity and productivity um, it, it's basically uh, it has an elegant syntax that is natural to read and easy to write um, and pretty much it's like you're writing an English letter it's really easy to understand and I would um, really suggest uh, that Ruby is your first programming language to learn. Um, it's nothing like JavaScript, C++, or any other possible uh, languages that you might know. All right, so now let's get ahead and get our hands dirty. So to run Ruby, you have to uh, have Ruby installed. And I showed you how to do that in the last video. Now to uh, write uh, code, you can do that in two ways. So the first way will be to create a f uh, folder anywhere. I created a folder tutorial on my desktop, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it. I'm gonna go ahead and open it with my text editor. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use whatever you want. And I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it hello.rb. Now you can name it whatever you want, it just has to end with the .rb uh, extension. So basically, that's how we know that it's a Ruby file. Um, all right, so now I'm just gonna put in a simple code that is hello world And what this code does it's basically gonna output hello world like uh, just Do nothing with it. Just say hello world. Uh, it's like console.log in JavaScript All right, but now uh, we can't execute this code yet because you know, we haven't um, We haven't done anything so to execute it on all operating systems you have to open up your terminal or your command prompt and um, we're gonna go ahead and navigate to the folder that we put this file in so I, my folder is located on the desktop so I'm gonna cd into desktop and then it's also in the tutorial folder so I'm gonna cd into tutorial all right you can do that same process in all other operating systems and now we're just gonna type a ruby in the name of the file which is hello.rb and we can see that we get hello world. All right, perfect. Um, there's a much simpler way that would be by just typing IRB. Um, in Windows, I think you have to find interactive Ruby in the Ruby section on your start menu. I think that's where you can find it. I'm not really sure. Um, all right, now once you have uh, opened IRB, you can type in exactly the same code. So it puts hello world. And you can see that we get hello world. All right, so we're gonna, for t the tutorial purposes, we're going to be um, writing code here in our interactive Ruby. All right, so the first thing I want to teach you about Ruby are the variables. So in JavaScript, we define a variable like this, let a equals 10, for example. All right, and um, in C, C sharp, we, for example, do string a equals whatever. All right, we have to say what the type of the variable is. Um, in Ruby, we just say a equals and whatever we want. So we can do hello world. Now this is a string. And the types can be a uh, integer, a float, a string, a boolean. Um, it can also be an object, an array. It could be a lot of variables, but the most important one, uh, the most important ones to uh, remember are str uh, string, uh, integer, boolean and float there's also a double but you won't see the difference i mean i won't explain the difference right now um those are all the types um i mean there are more complex types but those are the basic ones so the string is basically a text and we define it by just doing double quotes and then the text the integer is a whole number it could basically be 10 or 1 the boolean is either uh, true or false, and it can also be 0 or 1. And the float is basically an integer with a um, floating decimal point, for example, 10 point whatever, um, or 2.2, or 4 point whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. 
Um, true or false. All right. And but we don't specify the type of variable we're going to write. We just say we just write in the name of the variable. For example, I want to name a variable called the name. I'm going to call it. Uh, I'm going to uh, set the value of it Alexander because that's my name. All right. Now, when, when we type in name, we get the value of the variable, which is name. We can also do basic math operations with variables. For example, we can say uh, a equals one and then b equals two. And we can say a um, a plus b equals three, a minus b equals minus one, a divided by b is uh, zero, which is not true, but I guess we have to convert it into a float. And then, because it's 0 0.5, and then um, we can also multiply it with like this, a times b equals 2. All right. So those are the variables. That's how we define variables. Um, it's really a straightforward process. And um, just remember those um, four or five simple, easy to remember types of variables. Um, and remember that we also don't specify the type of the variable. We just write the name and its value. Um, and we can't write it like this. We have to put them in double quotes. Otherwise, it won't know that it's a string. All right. So that's it. And I'll see you in the next video.